Those used to be so peaceful to understand, but you know, it's really been a problem. We really don't, we really can't be crickets, even though we don't understand that as a people generally. Come here every week to talk about it. More and more people are coming around, how this works, what it's working. I don't know if the translation's happening and exactly what it's going to take for people to start finding that wrong. They need to be made rank right and how that goes about. I still see and sense, uh, sense first and then see uh, there's a big gap in capacity and capability for us. And so I can only come weekly to give my uh, observations on this. And as the uh, notice to us, we people call the news, the notice to us is uh, informs us, use those to springboard on into uh, pointing out points of potential interest that we can jump in and use those also to say, okay, here's the problem. How do you, uh, how, how do you begin to, to solve that problem if, you, if you're so interested? If you've made the decision that there's nothing to do, I, I suppose getting behind a woodshed here is not going to be helpful. Nobody offers uh, all these years. Nobody's offered too much suggestion. Uh, here and there we get that. Uh, so I kind of go blind a bit and in generality. And so I get a little bit of criticism not getting so, so specific, but it's not uh, so easy to get specific. No one else is li- interested in it. I can talk to one, uh, the one who's interested in an email just as easily. And uh, usually, or a chat, and that usually it's it, it, the answer comes pretty quick as we people who have asked a question and are interested in their answer they find out pretty quickly. Even through the hamster wheel on uh, reallibertymedia.com. dot uh, com, the uh, the point being that the, it, it takes a different uh, awareness, as I see it, uh, and, I, and my my experience tells me it takes a different, totally different awareness. From on moving from what you thought you knew into dealing with the reality of the world, not making excuses about it, not using all your knowledge to be d- different, distant to it, n- not to make uh, bind your own, you know, you, you bind your own self, your sl- m- uh, mental slavery uh, as well. But before I get too far on on all that, uh, BTW RLM two five zero for those of you on Pastcast, Recast, Blogcaster, you'll see it in there. That's the code for the content that I'll eventually get to here on the uh, on the notice, uh, just so you can uh, see where I came from and see what may be interested me as I speak, and uh, utilize that to start start your studies. It's uh, really on and on about what you could learn, and I've asked you all instead of making it, it all I can do is remember what happened to me. It took me a long time to start. It was so much information. It just took a long way to sort it out. And that took a lot of time that we really don't have right now, as I see it. That we need people engaging the infrastructure that's been built inside the walls, if you will, of our of our nation and capital. And this is castle, and this is everywhere, not just the United States. But I focus on the United States because I understand that. I believe I understand the condition a little better here, and I have a pretty solid foundation. In the soil law, the land disposal law, the foundation, the law of the land, literally. So I come at it a little different, I think, whether people understand that or hear it. And uh, things, as I've told you, there's a battlefield. You're in a war, whether you want to agree with it or not. You will be overtaken. You're either occupied or or there's a conquest. If you are a people that will not fight anymore or can't, that under international law is conquest. You're done. No matter what your opinions are, like I've told you, the open-air prison, or even the prisoner in a closed prison can yell and scream all they want. It doesn't matter. Your First Amendment rights not going to be violated in prison, but you're not effectual. You're not going to get anything to change. And this seems to be my main concern for y'all uh, about how this all works. Uh, now, uh, taking and applying what I understand uh, and and starting to work with it and start saying, okay, I'm in a battle. I better figure out how to do it. And there's just certain things you do. And if you did do any kind of study on the real fighting, you realize that you become a lot more uh, uh, contemplative on, let's say, a fighting style or weaponry or what you might do in a real engagement. You're not as, uh, if you think it's a game, you, you you can go ahead and lose, you know, you can lose your life and come back in. Well, in real life, that's not reality. And so this is a different thought process, and, uh, as I understand it. Uh, and that's kind of how I walk into this without any training uh, about how we approach what we're going to do, that we don't put ourselves in jeopardy 
wherever we're going to, uh, once we find the wrong that we need to make right, we don't put ourselves in jeopardy because we won't have the next day to fight the battle, which needs to be made right. And if you are vanquished, it's over. And so the other, uh, one of the options that you have is you go into the place where they're, uh, the infrastructure they've made, and you find where, and I use the international law and provisions, at least the generically common, for as, as cringeworthy as people will make that word, uh, understanding of people, men and women, uh, in time immemorial. I just go ahead and use that universal understanding. Not you universal, but you universal. Of how we've got here as a people throughout time. And I use those as a guide. And uh, they seem to function pretty well. Just uh, principles that I, I hold up to. When I approach the thing from the battle condition, the battlefield, as I tell you, and you're in a war and you've been overtaken and you've been you're living amongst the enemy and it doesn't know and some of them don't even know they're the enemy, and they probably wouldn't be if you were able to talk to them and that's another communication set. But uh, there's a you're inside their their structure and I've pointed out to you, you can be involved in a system and not even know it's the false front. What I call the spaghetti western of society is your society today. You don't realize. Likely, you don't realize that this has been controlled. The civil society you see, and the civilian that you are, that they you're you're defined, says that there's a system that's running what you see. It's it's keeping the paint on the buildings that you think you're going into, and the systems and this and that. Uh, so that, that's a clue. You know them when you see them, folks. You, you got to see them, folks. But they're they're transparent. And and, uh, and as I was talking in the UCY chat here just before on uh, Ron's broadcast, uh, over an hour ago now. Uh, it's it's not conformity, uh, as uh, one poster put in there. It's uh, in, in the Hegelian dialectic context. It's uh, actually a transparent transformation. It's it's secret to it's clear. It's not within your awareness. The transformation that's going on is not completely a, in your awareness. And that's how this thing works. That's the tool. That's the war. And to do that, they've had to translate a reality into a non-reality, and they had to get you to consent to it. And so, I hope if you're following what I'm saying. So you've consented in this in this condition. You can complain about it all you want. It doesn't matter. It's not going away. As I've pointed out years and for years now, it's not going away. I wanted to tell you, because of something I'm working on, and we're, we're going to push another we're going to push another another uh, envelope here. Uh, we're going to find out where this goes. I ran across something, and it occurred to me I'd like to discuss with you, at least uh, instead of getting to the tabs real quick, uh, I want to discuss something that I find people have a big issue about and uh, make a big hay over, and, uh, they all have, and they all can be right. Again, remember I've told you, I've exposed you how you can be absolutely right, but in a way it would be, be wrong in its application. You've got to be very careful about what you apply things to. Uh, that it's, I don't want to get into sound, I mean, that may have sounded, when I get into this thing, I'm going to make a discussion and make it sound like it's judgmental. What I'm saying is that there are, are things in the world that you, we are confronted with, and we find out, and you really have to kind of rest a bit with what you're finding out. And we have people that, uh, and I've done it, I, I have my dictionaries too. Um, I have my sources, and I use them, and I, I bring them out, and I, I do confirmations for myself. In fact, I've, all this week, I've been kind of, Silent from the uh, social uh, Twitter sphere, if you will. We're moving in, like I said, we're, do, we're moving into some kind of an objective here, taking a lot of my time to do that. And, and, and this whole thing is a re, uh, no matter what, how much I think I know, I'm really checking over and over what am I dealing with. Well, it came up, and I found it very interesting. I thought I'd discuss it with you all. Not in particular what's going on, but in something that I see people generally, it's almost like a fear or it's an evasion, it's this big avoidance. That I'm trying, and I've been trying to explain something to you. I think I can do it through through this this term that's come up. It's come up since um, it became notor uh, uh, notorious to people uh, of, if I can say, liberty minded, uh, free being free, wanting to be free of oppression uh, back in the 90s. And and it came through a couple of processes that I analyzed. And on the surface, the processes look cool, look pretty neat. But as I started to apply more of this property law stuff, I started applying it to everything I did as far as the chains. And in a case, you're told there's a chain of evidence uh, from anything. And that's that you can you go to the bank with that. It's a chain of title as evidence. It's a chain of evidence in court cases. There's a chain of how 
that, that proves something, at least as best we can prove something, in a course of, of proof. Now, uh, what's the word, the term straw man popped up around the middle 90s as I understood it, uh, going into the late, later into the no, middle 90s and later into the 90s. That people have since then just, it's just become this big, I mean, it's the focal point of everybody's existence. Now, I'm not diminishing, I don't want it to sound like I'm diminishing it. It's a very serious weapon that has been used against us. But I want to show you, if I can put it in this context, when you find yourself in a fight and you lose your weapon, one of the options you better think about doing is taking the other guy's weapon and using it against him. Otherwise, you may not last long. So this is kind of how I approach a little bit of this. And I don't disregard, don't, if you please do not understand that I'm disregarding the importance. I'm looking to, they're using a weapon. I acknowledge that, and then I find out a way, and I find where, and I develop the points and the facts that allow me to show that they weren't supposed to be using that weapon. And then I can disarm them. And then I take that weapon they use, and I use it against them, is what I'm talking about here. I'm not afraid of the straw man. In fact, I learned a, a couple things here that had escaped my awareness before when I did research that term because it became such a focal point of what was going on. And I've told you how to prove a negative within the name, uh, the identity, the status that they create, the system creates for you. And I've showed you how you do it yourself, uh, the application. It's an applique. You stick it to you. So I want to just touch briefly here uh, this straw man concept. And I want to maybe open up an awareness uh, that uh, came to me this week while I was dealing with it myself, but on the way I'm suggesting you use it, you figure out a way to set up the the record in order to utilize it as a, a disarming condition and then a, a weapon against the perpetrator of the use, user of that against any one of you. And I want to read just a quick uh, definition. And I, and I want to preface this with my um, failure to notice, and uh, this happens to be when you start reading more and more dictionaries, you start to make a lineage of these things, and I don't necessarily like Black's Law Dictionary, but it's it's what people seem to rely on. So I'm going to go with uh, with what people want to rely on. To me, it really, it's neutral. I'll, I'll use about, use about anything if I can just, I just have to get an understanding on it. So I'm going to use Black's Law, and I'm going to uh, make you aware that it escaped my uh, awareness, that over time, the Black's Law editions didn't have, originally didn't have the word straw man in it. And so this is a recent, a recent recognition within the d dictionary system as well. And I hadn't noticed that until I went back and looked at the early version and then I, I went through and I looked at all the versions actually, did a quick study uh, in, in furthering my other project. And, um, this term was unknown. I just go start from maybe the bottom of my list as, as a reference. This term is unknown in Black's Law in 1968. And so let's put that into context and of what actually the system, the justice system, made these things called straw men, but they were just they were utilized. They were called fictions in order to get something done that couldn't be done, but to do justice with that thing. And that's a dangerous thing to be. Uh, wielding, and so you had to be real careful on, as a judge or a court system, how to do that, and not getting sanc giving sanction over to the judges and the courts and the bar system, which has been with us at least I know in this in the country, United States, well before. Well, let's see, it, it moved out west in 1892. So these people and the miners of 1866 were running them out, running these lawyers out on a rail, and uh, before 1866, so the mining districts would run these people out. They're called bar association members before they were the bar. They were attorneys or lawyers. They were the esquires of four of Europe. I don't want to get all lost in that. I'm saying that there's people have before us that were more knowledgeable about these types of people that uh, take your stuff and try to represent you through them and have torn your property. But these dictionaries came along and they, they show us a uh, meaning. And uh, this term straw man was unknown in, in, a, in 1968 Black's Law. It comes up in the 1990 version. And what I found interesting in going from my latest uh, the, to the bat to the as I went back through uh, the latest, if I understand, well, the latest I have, there could be a new one, is uh, 1999. And so let me read that because this is how I found it, and this is how it started to make impression to me, and how I started to understand how to use this. A straw man, by Black's Law definition, 
And there's other ways to use these, so let's not get too sold, but uh, sold on all this. But I want to point out something on using these things. They're using them to hurt us, and uh, they use this. Uh, they use this to weapon against us. That I, I, as I said, I think you can dis- you can take it away from them, to disarm them, and then use it against them because you can also find how they're not supposed to do this. And they they did that. When I say applique, they stuck it to you. You stuck it to you. Well, they take an oath; it sticks it to them. And so you have to develop all that as well. It's not that hard, not that long. It's just that you have to do these. So I'm not saying this is the silver bullet. I'm not telling you all that has to be done. I'm trying to show you that you can take these terms and you can be a, a, have a big aversion to them, or you can start looking at them and saying, boy, I'm in a battlefield, and I better figure out the weapons that's being used against me and those weapon systems, and I better be able to, to best those things. And uh, here's the straw man definition of 1999, uh, Black's Law. A fictitious person, especially one that is weak, or flawed. Number two, tenuous or exaggerated counter-argument that an advocate puts forward for the sole purpose of disproving it, also termed a straw man argument. Three, a third party used in some transaction as a temporary transferee to allow the principal parties to accomplish something that is otherwise impermissible. Four, a person hired to post a worthless bail bond for the release of an accused, also termed Straminius Homo. That's the 1999 version, and I, I just want to point on this number three. It's a, something that's been created, temporary transferee, to allow a principal party to accomplish something that is otherwise impermissible. This is where I started to focus on, and also this other bail bond condition, uh, where is a, a person hired to post a worthless bail bond for the release of the accused is a very interesting tool that's used against you as well, uh, whether you understand this or not. Now let me go to then the ninth, uh, the first. I think it's the first time I found in the Black's Law that this term pops up, but they also add something interesting, which is where I went with the uh, project that I'm working on. Straw, it's the, the, the term straw man or party. So I, I need to say that the word straw man here is two words, not, not one. Straw man or party. So you would have a straw man, you could use the term straw man or straw party. And so this, the word party becomes more interesting in the application of the weapon as used against people. Uh, uh, any, any, anyone. And so this is what I'm trying to say. If you understand this, you don't have to have an aversion to it. You just see, depending on how you bring it, and you don't, and I just have, will have to say, you do not use this as they apply it. You use this through collateral, what I'm going to offer you, you, they are used in a collateral attack to what they do. Understand this very clearly. We're not going in and asking for nothing. We're identifying that they're actually using this tool that's impermissible to use to do something impermissible. You use a collateral attack tool to do that. So the straw man or straw party that I could find was first brought up in 1990. And I was just pretty fascinated about that. I didn't realize that these were just recent terms, at least by Black's uh, own, own editions. The straw man or party, a front, a third party who is put up in name only to take part in a transaction, nominal party to a transaction, one who acts as an agent for another for the purpose of taking title to real property and executing whatever documents and instruments the principal may direct respecting the property. Person who purchases property from another to conceal identity of real purchaser or to accomplish some purpose otherwise not allowed. And so there's the first, well, an expansion on straw men to party and the addition again, its origination is one of Doing something with this straw creation, this fiction, what I have deemed a fraud in fact, and they use it to accomplish some purpose otherwise not allowed. This was the consistent thing in this definition. So I look at that. I don't have an aversion for the use of a straw man. That is what they do. That is what they put up for your accommodation, for those of you that knew uh, that knew that part, the accommodation party. That is used instead of as a transferee for you to be involved with by them. And so 
Well, how would I, how do, so how has it came to me as I was looking at this, given I'm doing a collateral attack on exposing this very point, this very thing that they do, that we all know that study it. Oh, they got the, you're the straw man, your capitalized name, all this, you go on and on and on, and I've asked you to take your information now and apply it. I've also told you you can prove a negative, you can show that that straw man that doesn't exist does not exist. How did I do, tell you to do that? Well, the, that same system that uses this definition and uses this weapon has a records department uh, for the official uh, records of their environment, of their state, their condition. And you go to that secretary. And in a way, it's no different than a mining district secretary. Uh, the mining district recorder was the recorder of all the things that a mining district did. It was the official uh, record keeper. That was the most important officer in a mining district. Was that well, well short of the assemblymen uh, and women? But uh, the the officer in the mining district was the recorder. Why? Because this country rules uh, works on evidence recorded to be certified to be used as evidence to protect the property that's been recorded. And there's supposed to be the laws and the and the system is supposed to be neutral to do that. That's it. What we've walked into is a substitution. And uh, well, some of us that may have been brought up, uh, born before uh, birth, whatever word you want to use so you don't get all triggered, uh, you came into this world and into that system more likely after this happened. And if not, it didn't matter because you're too young uh, to, to understand and you were involved with uh, what you thought life was before all this when they substituted your whole reality to a corporate condition. And the people didn't understand the importance of that. And those people that did that, the, those uh, supplanters, the uh, invaders, uh, said, listen, we just took over your state. Uh, we're, if you, you de jure uh, businesses and corporations and you people, you want protection, uh, we're going to toss you out. And if you want protection, you got to apply back in uh, for our protection now. Otherwise, they claimed you didn't have protection. Now, I'm surprised that no one no one fought that. Now, when they, when they reapplied to come in, you consented into that foreign system that they domesticated. This is the Bar Association did all this, and they did it questionably. They did it arguably through law, and I don't know that that was valid, but there it is. It's in the record, and it stands. So until some more people step up on it, and which is part of the thing, again, that we've been trying to show over time. But they use this application that creates this identity, this status, that they then have the say. You gave them permission. No one understood how this dynamic worked. Uh, but this straw party, as a definition, doesn't come up until much, much later. And so, in a collateral attack, you go find out that they're not supposed, these people that have an oath that are supposed to, uh, their duty and obligation, you've got to establish the duty. If you don't do that, you don't even have a call. You might as well forget it. You establish the duty. And their duty is to that system. But if you look very carefully in the establishment of the overthrow, under international law, they had to recognize everything that was something they could not change before it. No different than an example if you understand the United States took on California and all that uh, land from Mexico, and they had to accept the land grants from Mexico. Th that's how powerful these land grants, these patents and things are. They're treaties. And you, as an, as, a t as an acquirer of a territory, a conquester, and a uh, occupier, you're supposed to recognize all this. And if you don't, then you don't, res you can't, you're not going to be respected in yours. And so there's this, uh, if I can say, gentlemen's, uh, an international gentlemen's agreement. Uh, and it's pretty solid. It's really solid. I mean, these are lots of, uh, lots of, uh, if I could call it precedent, proving all this. So they have, to, these new system has to recognize that. And when they take that oath to that system, these people, you look around and you see that these are officials. They've essentially created their own straw party to do things. They're transferees. They've transferred your de jure organization over to a foreign jurisdiction. Uh, and they use these things for impermissible purposes. But if you're not there to witness that and then charge that out and you stay silent and you're a cricket, they listen to the cricket noise and they do nothing more than to continue looking around to stomp you some more. So. I wanted to point out, if they're here doing something using these straw men, since you know they exist, and I've explained to you how you find one, and they use that name, and the only time the way they'll represent that name is in all caps. I don't have to get involved with it. That's the only way they represent that thing. And then you find out the officers that are supposedly in courts and officials and in records 
are using that name for an impermissible purpose. Now, how do you establish that? You find out that they didn't have a right to use that, any purpose to interfere with an, a right that exists prior to when they established that oath, or to you, or to your land, or to anything you've established as rights. So I've, there's another element here. You have to establish that you had that prior to their uh, occupation. And this land law does that. Easy. So you, they are making these, the only thing they can look at is this status that has, has to have an application before they can uh, really see it. When they move on their own to fabricate a record, now you've got them doing the fraud of the fabrication and for an impermissible purpose. The duty they had by their oath to that system was not to trespass to do that. I just keep it in a simple trespass. There's a whole lot that goes on here all of a sudden really quick. That if I think I've said enough here that if those of you that do the study, if you had an aversion to the straw man, I'm telling you the very existence of that and your proof that it exists and then used against you the man, not the straw, not a straw, but the actual man or woman. And you tie a duty to not have trespassed that to one in officialdom that uses the color of that authority to do so, you've got them in a felony. And that's why I ask you, keep go, find, go find in your statutes that it, what's called uh, extortion and coercion. It's one on the violation to the property, which is extortion, and violation to the right to the property. That's coercion. Get these basic, you want to get definitions? Don't go use the dictionary here. You go right into their statutes. You go right into the condition that they have foisted upon you, and you identify exactly how you know it exists. You have, you find the proof. You prove exactly what you know, and then you hold it uh, as an as a you hold it as a, a dagger to their throat. Now, I'm, you know, I want to pause and just rest, and wish people were kind of thinking about what I'm saying. The I, I don't know where to more to say that that's an example of what I find is what we need to start doing. Don't be avert, avert. Don't cause an aversion to what we know. Actually, take it and take the next two steps in applying it in a reverse against a duty found that they weren't supposed to to violate. Don't question the. I don't question their oath. I go ahead. I don't care if it's faulty. I say it's valid. I want them tied to the to these things that I find out that they take the oath to. I want them tied. I want them to come back and said, "Tell me their oath is no good," because I've got them utilizing a straw party because they're doing it in court case starts issues, or they do it to prepare for a a, re, a, rec, a civil record, administrative record to prepare a suit. They're pre-preparing the party record. And that's another forced association on its own, isn't it? So now we get they were supposed to recognize no forced association. Where did I get that? Your First Amendment, so-called. But they were not. You have the right of free association. You have the corollary right of to be not be forced into association. They're doing that through this instrument, this tool, this thing they call the straw. You know, most people know him as a straw man. I see the definition for straw party, and that party word has been removed since then. I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway. Doesn't matter to me. I know that it's there. I know what they're talking about. That's why it was there. It was there in the beginning. Uh, like some of the other things they removed in 1999. If you notice, if you know about blacks, you know they adjust blacks to adjust to um, the, in particular, the you can watch it track the uni U uniform commercial code. And it's a special dictionary, actually. And I don't even know that it's actually valid, even though it's used. But since so many speak to it, I'm going to go ahead and, and speak to it. I'm not afraid, I tell you, I'm not afraid of going ahead. Let's go ahead and through it. You want to give me all you know about the entomology about all this? Fine. How is all that knowledge going to help to defend you against this weapon against you? Is my question to everybody. How are you going to take your knowledge? Again, it's evolutionary engagement. How are you going to engage that which sits to attack you or wait till you move a little bit the wrong direction to hit you? And they only hit you this way. How simple is this, folks? They only hit you this way. The definition of straw man, even in blacks, whether I don't have to qualify it, I just use it. But I don't use it against me. I use it that they shouldn't have been using it against me. 
And there's another thing. I don't want to. I can't give you the whole, the the whole thing. It's just too much actually to discuss for this. So let me get back. For those people that know and, and work and and, and and whatever you do to the term, whatever it does in your mind, it's a thing. It's a tool. It's a weapon. It's something. As we read up, it's the beginning. It says the fictitious person, especially one that is weak or flawed. You cannot come, they they didn't make this in order to make you powerful. What your power is, is to come in and show they didn't have the right to make that, impute that to you, defame you with that status, to take your right, whatever the property is that they're doing, uh, under the color of their authority. That's extortion and felony. uh, The books I've read, the, the code that they've agreed an oath to, says those are felonies. Now, they go ahead and use that. I say, go ahead and use that. But don't use that against me to harm me in something you didn't have the right to take, interfere with. Your statutes say you don't have the right to take or interfere with. And you think you're going to get away with it because you have been, because nobody, everybody's been crickets to this very point. Well, and lately, oh, because everybody's just arguing about the existence of the straw man instead of saying, hey, wait a minute, okay, yeah, it is there. Well, and it's only used for an imp- impermissible purpose to put someone in a disability. That's another harm. And you look very carefully in these statutes, it says you're not supposed to suffer these disabilities. That they do it, and they do it on a systemic basis, is now what you're supposed to be, fo- you should be focused on. I embrace the fact that they exist. Did you hear what, did you hear me? I say, I embrace the fact that a straw man exists. I'm not the straw man. I know they're using it as a weapon against me. They don't have the right. They don't have the authority, the power, I mean, whatever word you have, of, of destruction, you, you know, ultimate tyranny you can put on, despotism you want to put on that they might have. They don't have it. It's not there. So as long as you're afraid of using it or that you just argue that you are or not or whatever, I'm not that, or you do, oh, let's put the colon behind my name, and you start doing all this stuff, and don't get to the heart, you're a cricket. You're a cricket. You're a knowledgeable cricket. You're an educated idiot. An idiot, I should make it so hard. An idiot. A man who does not know. I don't know if I haven't, haven't used that term. So they they use this as a tool, and it has a foundation for it. They have to, because it's what they had to do when they they uh, domesticated a foreign entity uh, to make it look like. It's a de, de facto state that oh, has substituted your de jure government. And in this case where I look at from the pro, pro, uh, soil disposal, it's a complete crime. It doesn't even take that much discussion. Because when you, more re- when you research more, you'll find that there is every prohibition against the d- use of this, the creation of the tool, or the use of it to divest you, disgorge you, the, the, to their unjust enrichment. All these equity terms start popping up, which allow the remedies of restitution. If you don't, that's a, okay, so I just gave you the remedies of restitution. I've given you the idea of what how, what one collateral attack is. And in fact, uh, more of it is you do multiple collateral attacks in building your record. And you don't ask them questions. And I'll have to say here, I guess before the fact, uh, I here, keep hearing uh, this this video going around where Cliven Bundy's saying, with his attorney sitting right next to him, we challenge the jurisdiction of that court. And, uh, but, and they didn't. They said they they didn't answer. They didn't. They did. They said they had jurisdiction. Well, they didn't do it. By the way, I'm saying collaterally attack the jurisdiction of that court. No, they went in by a motion. They moved the court by the very nature of the instrument that they file. They asked the court, "Are you a criminal?" And the court come back and said, "No." Makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to anybody else. But they think, those two people, that attorney and that Ed Clive and Bunny, believe they challenge the jurisdiction of the court. That's not how you challenge the jurisdiction of the court. So, like what I said, be careful when I, to use what I'm saying in application, like you think that's the only thing to do, and uh, now I have my case. It's no silver bullet here. Uh, and because it's a an occupying force that does run that system, uh, don't expect that you may see justice either. But that's the point of the record, to point it out. When you have them, you can make the record not on your opinion, not on your word definitional lists, which change from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, as I've told you before. You can't expect stability. 
but you can make a record beyond opinion within the context of the obligations of the people that claim and pretend to have these obligations. You show them to be the pretense that they are. And you, you make the case for the people to watch because we have to have the mass of educated people. You make them, you show them how this is working against them. And I, I've said it before. We have a foundation made. In fact, this, what I'm, I've, been, I've refer, referenced that foundation showing that the federal courts have no authority to do what they do, and they still harm people. No different. If you think that Cliven Bundy's case and the judge doing the cat box cover-up, uh, was she? I told you, I predicted that she had to do that, and she did. Uh, almost to my astonishment, to, when I say this, I don't really, I know it's going to happen, but I don't know it. You know, you don't know the future. But when they do, it's kind of astonishing to actually watch it. She does the cat box cover. You think that, that judge is doing it for, for justice? And I kind of got jumped at my calves and I start talking about this, but maybe I mis, misorganized my, my position here. But uh, And if you think that's the only wrong you saw in the, perse the, pro the persecutor being caught? No, this is a systemic problem. And it doesn't end at the federal court. It's completely within the state courts. It's within your municipal courts. It's the system. It's a systemic plunder. Now, that's my opinion. How do I prove it? It's no different than our opinion is they use the straw man, and we can complain about it. How do we prove it? And I've explained over time how you prove it, and how you know, and I'm explaining now how you uh, start to affect that. And what you, my thought, my interpretation of what we're doing is within that system, don't be afraid of the words they use, use them, because they're using them against you. You do, you you take their weapon from them. And then you turn them around and you show that they had no right to be using that weapon at all. And you do it by an objective basis, not because you think so, or your opinion, or this and that. And how do, how do you do that first of all? Is you do it within the context of the jurisdiction that claims to be your government. It's in there. All you got to do is go read those statutes. Oh, it's a statute. It's not a law. I don't care. It could be a policy. It's their policy. Fine. Go use it. Hope you didn't look past the thing. I tell you, go to your cops and use po change their policies so they don't shoot you on the street, or there's some kind of kind of accountability because they don't have it now. Did I say go change a law or a statute? No, it's all policy. So go change it because that's what you live under. That's another thing they can't take from you. It's your people's right to change it, and uh, uh, the crickets on all this stuff. All these all these tools we sit there and. Uh, w complain about being underneath the, the oppression and, and don't don't do it. Lift a finger. Oh, we'll lift our hind legs, but we won't lift our finger uh, to stop this. But really fascinating to me. But anyway, I, I hope I haven't. I hope I clarified this. A straw man is a term. It's recent, actually, compared to what my studies have been. It wasn't even known to the mining time. All right, this is a new, apparently a new, at least, and it wasn't in Bouvier's. It wasn't in any other dictionaries as well. No, I understand it could be someplace else, but that, that's not what I'm dealing with, so I didn't really go that far. But it's, it's a recent acknowledgement of something that's been used by the system at least since the 60s, the late middle 60s. Well, 63 was when the United States federal government, federal, adopted the Uniform Commercial Code as a uniform code, as a model uniform code. Okay, so that, that seems, it's about... You know, that's a few years, five years later, they come up with a dictionary uh, term that points it out. And so this gave credence to some things that come on by 30 years later, just short of 30 years later, in the redemption process and all that, and the straw man and all that. Now we got free man on the land. All Everyone talks about it, don't know a dang thing about how to stop it. Or how to more, as I say, more properly address the problem and actually get some evidence of what's going on uh, that you know is going on. Now, I'm not denying anything that you may know is the truth about that corruption. I'm saying you're not stepping up to expose it for people beyond an opinion or just a whine and cry and uh, gnashing of teeth and all this other stuff. We can get lost in all the definitions. We can get lost in the, uh, well, again, I've done it as well. I've read the entomology. I've read the, it, I had to get beyond that. It, all that didn't help me. I've read so many dictionaries, I can tell you, I used to be able to, it's not important anymore at some level, I just know it happened. Like here, the, the, the dictionaries change over time. Well, that's not, that's not very good either, right? 
nothing's really very stable. And you start looking, well, if things are changing, there's something allowing the change, then we may be recognizing that there's something underneath the skin allowing the change and needing the change. Let me kick you back to the thing I've told you way in the past when I started looking back around the 1900s, and this is right after the attorneys showed up on the West Coast. All of a sudden, the state seals started changing almost yearly, if not a couple times a year. And back in understanding about heraldry and shields and these things, I realized these uh, scutcheons that they're making uh, were changing the, uh, the depiction of the state in representation, your icon of the state, if you, as you understand it today. The heraldry of the state changed because something in the state was changing. And they do this all along. You can watch, and I started to realize if I watch the change of the seal, I can tell something important happened to change the organizational structure of a state. And, and I don't think I found a one time I couldn't eventually find, uh, sometimes they're pretty obscure, why they all of a sudden made this new seal. Why do you even change the seal? Why does it stay steady state? Because there's been occupations going on, and it seemed to be correlated right after uh, the 1890s, when the attorneys meant it from Chicago into the West. And so this is another clue. You start tracking down, oh, let's, let's watch what the attorneys do then. And that's where I started to come in. I can't say the I found it. That's when I identified the, uh, the substitution that happens in 1953, just coincidentally in time for the 1954 federal tax laws. And now we might want to get into possibly your CAFR. Yeah, for those of you that understand that, I haven't timed that the same way. What I'm saying is that's the where they says make records and keep books. That's the books and the records. The Federal Reserve, uh, the Federal Registry was an administrative side. They were making records and keeping books. They adopt, they changed the 39 tax code to 54, though. The year right before a lot of states went through this tra this substitution. And so, you have to apply into that system. They're not supposed to be able to attack you, but they do. And then, so I realize I've told you before, you can't just stand on your man on the land. you got to show you have an existence outside of that de facto state. And the best place I've found so far is in the land disposal laws and your rights to those. Those are antecedent all this. And so they want to make a straw man that's un, that's unknown to a grant of Congress? Go ahead. Use that to affect my property or my rights. You're committing a felony. Do it. Go ahead. Is my attitude anymore. And so I hope, hope I've uh, laid something out here. This is really a fundamental uh, a foundational position to uh, work from. It's not self uh, created, you have to do the work to create the elements of what you're doing on a bunch of, actually quite a few uh, sides. Uh, you have your, essentially they got, they got a bunch of doors that are coming in on your, on your castle. You got to make sure you got fortifications on all those places that they'll come to violate you. Then you also have to hit them for the fact they didn't have the right to violate you. You also have, uh, the proof that they knew that that they weren't supposed to violate you, and then your the duty connection that they have to do that. And that's the main, I guess, one of the main points here, that within that d duty that you find that they have, you prove this by their own actions, and that's one of the main things is the oath. Even just sitting in the office and doing things will impute that to them. You have to set the fact of that. Then you show within that they couldn't do, they couldn't use the straw man. Oh yeah, you know they're using it, but how do you, you work that? Because they, they'll beat you down to death with it. When you do this better, you'll understand you can go in, and, and this is part of the other thing I'm working on, you can be right there with the status of the man or the woman, and you know they're dealing with a fiction, and you've got the proof in the record already when they start dealing with it, and they won't address you. I shouldn't say address you, you should be dressed. Uh, there's no, uh, any anyway, rate, they, they will not uh, acknowledge you. Which is a crime, because uh, another part of this is the remedy of how you're there. You're not there as the defendant. You're there as witness of a crime going on, and you are essentially intervening to do justice. 
and you're on two levels there, so I can't I can't qualify that on this broadcast. But the point is, there's some there are some very fundamental steps that you take to establish the things that is recognized that need to be established by the remedy you choose, not them, that's not within their system, but sits there to out their system. Now, this straw man, I, I was actually had a smile on my face when I saw the straw party definition, because that's really more of what I needed, is the word straw party. And so that, that I said, well, here, here's all, because I, I was already looking for this, I guess. Again, you have to be receptive. Uh, had, I said my awareness hadn't noticed it this way, this way. Although, uh, although my action, my, uh, my, uh, de- my focus, my intention was to do exactly that. And guess what? There it was. My past reading that I'd forgotten comes back to help me. I was able to recognize the things I was already, I already have in the plan in the record. In fact, I was astonished. Uh, I was told, you know, we already got that, and we already have that record. We already have that. I go, really? We wrote that all? Yeah, it's all out there. It's been done for months and months and months. Now, I don't quite, a, I don't hold on to everything. I just kind of move to what has to be done. And again, you're on a mission. You're having to accomplish certain things for your end result. And that's all I guess. I'm trying to stop this, and I keep talking. There's so really more to say. I don't know what's going to clarify this to you. Uh, those of you that understand the straw man uh, or think that it's a big weapon, it is a big weapon, but don't let them use it against you. Turn it around. There's a way to turn it around. I've explained a little bit in the last 45 or so minutes about that. This is just the straw man concept. There are so many other places and things that are done to destroy us and to interfere with our rights and remedies and property and our pertinence things and all that stuff and us, uh, you know, us ourselves. Uh, there's so many different things that you apply the, you apply this very thing I've told you in the last 45 minutes to whatever, whatever you do. Uh, as well as the other things that you need to do, which I had so much to talk about, and I, in part, I don't want to say too much, because unless, again, this is like the property law stuff. If you don't start with the right foundation, and each one of your, it's on a case by case basis, they, you better understand that. A case by, they treat you like a cattle call. But when you start asserting your collateral attacks to that, and you've done it with a proper record, and you've made the proper record to do so, you're not treated in the cattle call, and now you've started to, they won't treat you any better, but you've now established the, the fact that they're gonna, their willful disregard of all these things you've now established. You've now gained, you've gained, a, you can call it, a tacit procuration, a tacit agreement. You've now got a contract if you do it, if you understand how this lays out. And you, for those of you interested with the UCC, you'll understand that tacit agreement concept. But what may not be understood is this silence is not just acceptance. That's not even as this powerful as the fact that a silence, when you tie a duty, you find someone using a straw man as a transferee that, that's being used in a third party system to take your property. You've got them doing the impermissible act. You find their oath that they weren't supposed to do that, and you tie them to this condition, and you've you've got them in the crime. You're not doing it from. You're not asking their permission about it. No, you're doing it as an external collateral attack through the remedies that the law says are available that they've agreed are there. You tie their duty to the fact that they weren't supposed to do that. They use this straw man, and they they are taking your property through it, and it doesn't exist. And I've told you how to, how to do that. How do you prove that? How do you prove that negative? It's really not a negative, but that's that's the joke. <laughs> this is how I flipped over this thing is, and you can expose this, and hopefully you, you do it in a way that's uh, pretty formidable. And uh, you know I'm I'm focused to try and do that. I hope we'll we'll accomplish our 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 goal. Uh, but we'll see if, if the ex, if the example of our 2013 victory is anything to see. Uh, people don't recognize this. That's how far and away we are from no, being actually knowing. We know a lot, but we don't know the right stuff. We don't apply the right stuff. We don't approach the problem in the right way. And all that's known and used against you. And so we could rattle and rattle and rattle about the straw man but, and, and, and how much we're not that status. They don't care, and they don't care when you start to out them either. And that is a good thing because that makes your job a whole lot more simple, isn't it? It's not like they're nuancing this thing or splitting hairs to make it look like there's a. Uh, it's not like they they're, they're trying to find a way to hide right in plain sight. 
They can't. They just stop talking to you. Well, silence is a false. I was getting to it. Silence is not just acceptance. It's worse. It's a false representation where you tie the duty to the one that was supposed to respond. And this is what one of the remedies you'd use does. And they fail to respond. Their representation of what their duty is a false representation on its, uh, on its face. As a matter of law. I, that's as a matter of how this works. It's not my opinion. I don't ask them their permission. It's their failure to respond. Their silence. The crickets I get when we get into this. That's a fault. More than a fault. A, a, a tacit acceptance. A, a tacit procuration. It's a false representation on the one having the duty to answer remaining silent. I love to hear those crickets. And I get them more and more from these people. What we're now doing is compiling these silences together to show we got a tacit procuration of the facts stated. We got the law to back that up. And then their, their representations that all were false in the front end of it. And I don't know about you, but a couple more things added end onto that. I don't know where they run. I don't know what dark hole they can find. The only dark hole is that this thing is uh, the, it's the stinking abyss. You're in the dark hole. And that may not actually crawl you out because it's a systemic thing. And we're back to Thomas Jefferson needing the educated masses to be vigilant and to uh, essentially uh, call for ma mass call for accountability. And so I don't know what more to do uh, to explain this little thing. It's already taken almost an hour. Um, again, straw man. Oh yeah, straw man. Don't. Uh, okay, now you know it. Now what? And it's being used against you. Now what? And so, last hour, hour or so, 45 or so minutes, I, if you go back and listen, if you, unless you understood and you were taking notes and you can keep going, you take what I've said, start to apply it. Start to, start to bring out the things I didn't say, all the silence. I get, people get irritated with me when I don't talk so much and don't explain things. Uh, but it's, I, I partly do that, well, I do that for two reasons. One, it's not a silver bullet, so I don't want to hand you a gun if you don't know. Number two, I need you to go find out these answers on you, so when you see the black and white in your eyes, it's no, it's no question. And I, as I was pointing out something else, which I almost pulled, uh, was going to do today, but I decided I better not. It is too, it is quite a bit. Uh, just even under the question, can we charge this? Under that question, going back in, in my ignorance of it, I said, okay, I'm going to suspend my disbelief that it doesn't exist. Well, we found something. And in looking at that was exactly the ease and how you put together Anything you want to do with charging an official against what uh, for a crime, utilizing their system, then I can do it. You know, once I see it, I like it. Once I saw it, the black and white, I assembled the parts. Pretty simple. It's like an erector set for one charge. Once you see this, I can't tell it to you. You have to see it. Once you see it, there's no question. That's why I don't say a lot. I want you really to engage. Then you got something. You got skin in the game. All right, you want to put yourself on the line. That's how you do it. And you see, when you find out that a term that's a criminal act has elements, and they're acknowledged by the system that you're looking at, that's doing it, uh, to have the elements that they have, and they're written in stone, if you will. You just go ahead and prove those elements and make them a part of your statement. Pretty simple. And within five minutes of something I didn't even know existed that way, I understood it a different way. I was, I found the black and white. I started to read it. It was authoritative. I put it, it just not even five minutes. I had a whole new, a new short two sentence or a sentence. Not even, it was two lines. It wasn't even a sentence. One sentence, two lines. I had a whole charge that wraps up a whole. I keep telling you about uh, extortion and coercion. There's another charge that kind of is a roll up of that. I, I hadn't noticed that because I hadn't noticed it in that jurisdiction. So I, I hadn't thought about it. But upon the question, I revisited my ignorance. And it wasn't the first thing that came up. What came up was what I remembered wasn't applicable. But in looking through quickly, I found a description. It was on the search engine. On the Internet now, folks. I'm not doing anything special. I saw a description that used words that were not consistent with how I was seeing the description list of the search engine coming up before. The one down a ways was this little description that didn't have the same words that spoke in the point of crime. And I said, that's what I'm looking for. And sure enough, there it was. 
So if from ignorance to five minutes later having a sentence of new charges, it's a roll-up of the extortion and the coercion. It's pretty interesting, pretty cool. That it, I want to point out that this is how this starts to work when you read this black and white. It won't work until you start doing that. You stop making, you keep making excuses. You'll never understand what I'm saying. You'll never understand how it's not getting engaged. You'll never understand how it really works. You'll never know how fast it can stuff can be actually pulled together. It's a little more tedious to pull the history record together because of their denials and this and that. But that's the amount of that's just what has to be done. Because otherwise, they're not going to hand it to you. Remember that. They don't even do it as well as the lawyers are telling them to do it. Where you deny, they don't even deny. They just shut up. Their silence is a false representation of the act they, they claim outwardly to be doing, which itself is a false front. And what else would you expect? If you know what I've said, they created the false front. Everything they do is a false front. Even if the military is running it, they are the false front to the military occupation. It's a spaghetti western existence is all I can see. And you walk into that town, and you walk in there unarmed, and they try to pull their guns, and you disarm them, and you, now you got all the weapons, and they're standing there in the street. Now what? Well, there's another, there's more, more of a chessboard here going on, but that, and multi layers. But the point is, is at least you got this down. You don't take a word that uh, you take as a victimization, and don't use it. They're handing you the weapon essentially on this. You just have to put the fact together. And so, let me move on. M more of these uh, things that go on. More more straw men in different ways. <laughs> more things they put up as transferees for you to engage or not. And I've been critical. I'm going to continue to be critical, I suppose. It's, uh, I guess I don't want my friends to be hurt. And I want I want this knowledge out there so that you aren't. And if you enter in, it's not about not entering in. It's en enter in with knowledge. And then evolutionary engage it and be be, be intelligent with it. Uh, this cryptocurrency thing, this blockchain. Uh, uh, you know, I hear people talking about trying to delineate how all this works. L listen, the, the the name of a coin is just the it's the package you wrap around a tech a, a ledger, a digital ledger. That's it. A digital ledger with a, a with an instruction a, a management code behind it. Uh, whatever you attach to it. And then I've explained to you when you get to the soil disposal, the land law, they're protecting your rights that that blockchain can't produce the actual documents you need that the law requires you prove. Now I've just showed you they create another straw man in the copy that's not the reality. That, that's why your local, your local uh, recorder is important. And, and so this is dangerous, dangerous stuff. And what they're doing is they're creating a straw system <laughs> that you're going to engage with. And this is what this uh, uh, cryptocurrency is. There's a big hype around it. There's a, a big, uh, you know, there's certainly speculation. I, I, I'll have to say it again. I guess it's my disclaimer. I think the technology is very cool. But it's not actually going to be where this goes on the power side. And so I guess the other option, and I think I'm going to point out here today, uh, as you move in through the organized structures that are integrated with organized systems, and make sure that if you're going to stay there, because I think the technology is viable in the future without it, make sure you do, you have a way to offload everything you have into a private system that doesn't rely on the uh, public if, systems, if I should say that. Uh, but there's a hype around this, and, and a couple weeks ago it came out. They're hyping this thing hard, and they're, they're doing it. I've told you they're doing it because they want people to become familiar with it, agree with it, think it's, and trust in it is the main problem here. Remember, we're dealing with these fabricated trusts or these tools as well. A straw man is really kind of a different type of a trust. It's untrustable, but it still sits there. So you're dealing in these legal entities anyway. Uh, but here's trust. Your confidence. It's a big confidence game as far as I can see. Like the virtual currency girls. World gets its first cryptocurrency pop group. If you didn't think this was a bunch of promotion. A digital currency fee as digital currency fever spreads across the world, an all new all girl pop band from Japan called Katsusuka Shoujo is on a mission to educate the public about personal finance. Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies. 
Well, <laughs> nothing about the blockchain there, is it? But uh, here they are. They're going to come out. They're, they're coming out, and they're going to have their first concert. In fact, I think they already they just had it. I didn't even go, go look. This is a big uh, promotion, a big uh, entertainment company. Pick them up. They make a band. Now we're gonna we're gonna popularize this with the with the youngins and maybe even you you you, you old long in the tooth types will be a, a, put a big smile on your face as the eight members of the group stand on the uh, on the stage and do their songs and performances with their little masks uh, represent a, uh, one of eight different top uh, coins. The mask uh, represents the co the the covering they throw on the blockchain ledger technology they're each individually using. And it's just a tool. It's a tool for what, though? I just told you the straw man is used by the tool of the oppressor to harm you. I'm sure I explained last hour, if you know that, then you can disarm him of that weapon and show he, was, he had no right to use it, and then show how when he used it, he used it to do something that he had no right to do, and that brings him into the felony extortion coercion issue. I've also been critical to say how this thing will work. The governments will either agree and uh, regulate you and tax you, or they will uh, ban the use of the crypto coin. And it, everyone goes, yeah, yeah, okay, you ban this thing. It's non-centralized. Well, it is centralized, given you go to an organization that's knowable and findable. And this is what's happening. Uh, a story comes out to say... Pretty much, he, does, he comes with a little bit different issues uh, on a writing. Uh, Ian Welsh, major, and I just wanted to, here, here's the heads up, folks. The government, uh, someone else saying, major governments can shut down cryptocurrencies at will. So those of us that are, not me, but those of you that are, I should say you, because I'm not doing it. I mean, part of me wants to be in it, but I've, I've got other things that I'm doing, so it's just not as important. Uh, but um, the you have to know that this thing is vulnerable. Of all the good things it might be, it's super vulnerable against the actual power in the world. And you may think you can run, as they tell you, that you're not going to hide. They will find, and this, this article points out, all they're going to do is they just call it to be those, that, those governments that, that outlaw it, or parts of it, all they have to do is get there, and he references the tax man as well. The tax man on the in, uh, exits and the entries of those organized exchanges that do this. He goes, uh, he starts his uh, article, and I'll just read a little bit, and you can read it yourself later uh, to find out his position on this. It's very consistent with mine. He raises uh, some other points, uh, and I say caution here, folks. Uh, caution Will Robinson, I guess, if uh, anybody out there is listening named Will Robinson. Uh, government can shut down the cryptocurrency experiment any time it wants. Government money creation worked because government insists you pay taxes in their money, and they have people with guns. Crypto exists as long as governments want wants it to. Crypto exists as long as governments want it to, and no longer. So get that, folks. If you didn't quite get these taxes, are on the on the medium you use. They pay taxes on the money, so-called, on these Federal Reserve notes that you. So he's telling you a secret right here that he knows. You use those FRNs, and they're subject to some. I could call it duty, I suppose, a taxation. If if you're using, it. I told you they were making this crypto issue as the currency that they use so they can tax it. He says it right here. He goes on to say there is great deal there's a great deal of triumphalism in the crypto world because it has made a bunch of people rich. Well, I guess we can also if you're not worried if you're not into doing that, you can go back to the uh, crypto virtual currency girls, right? If you're not into seeing rich but you like to be entertained, breads and circuses, it's all about a promotion. These are done to promote. But he goes on and says because uh, it makes a bunch of people rich. People who get rich virtually always think it is because they are great people. They feel empowered and so on. And according to the research, generally become selfish jerks with a reduced empathic, empathic response. The simple power relationship is this. 
Any government can put the hurt on crypto and largely shut it down in their country simply by criminalizing it and having their taxation folks watch the entrances and exits. Crypto can be badly hurt by three governments, China, the EU, and the U.S., in exactly the same way. I've talked about this as well. It's another one that sees this. Crypto is arguably in violation of hosts of security laws as it stands and can be made more illegal any time a regulator, a regulator or government chooses. Now, what, just quickly on this regulator, what, what do they do in this regulator? The regulator goes and looks at what? A legal entity which is then fabricated into a straw man. So, not an answer, but an opportunity to look at that as this works. If you literally take yourself out of that system and go private, not through the exchange. You may have that as the ability to stop it, as what I said last hour. People with guns beat people with cryptography. Code is not law, and the people who thought it thought it was were fools. Law is what people with something approaching a monopoly on violence in an area say it is, and nothing else. And I want to touch on this. This is the art of the regulation allowing monopolization. It enforces monopolization. I'm going to end there. There's more to read. Uh, here's the uh, warning. Uh, I think I see in here, if you folks that are in on it, have a way to offload your stuff into a private system. If it starts to come down, you're going to probably be able to survive yourself, uh, the value anyway, into other things that you can still keep private. Those are not going to be those are probably going to be harder for them to do, and you could probably work through there. And then you have the right of free enterprise, free exercise of your of your own energy and all that to come to bear. As I talk to you more of the law of the land, your rights, who you are, who you're uh, identifying, who you're not, and when they come after you, they come after you in a impermissible way, and how to out that. That's what I talked to you about last week. Exactly what he's talking about here will happen when you don't know about that. So this is he talk. He brings up the monopoly of violence. It's a monopoly. Of a mon of monopolizing also, and they use the power of the state to come after you. And I'm hearing a lot of states that are trying to tax local taxation of marijuana. That's exactly what's going to go on. They're going to go. They they fabricate a so-called black market, which is destroyed as soon as you have lawful. I mean, destroyed by any value. It's still there because there's this, this underground thing that always goes on. But uh, but it's that's a, a lie about being black market as well. But well, when you have the legalization, even the legal, not the, decrim the, the decriminalization, but the legalization, it functions, and then they take that money back and they put it back in to support law enforcement to go after all the other markets. They're essentially protecting, it's a protection society to protect the legal growers. And so you're just hiring the government to pay uh, for, the, to suppress competition. Right after that, the big boys move in and start picking up all the properties and they consolidate this and then you end up having like the mo you have like five or six people, five or six banks, five or six multimedia things, uh, five or six uh, places to go and, um, to go buy your food, supply your stuff. That's how this works is the regulation does this. So understand this is what you're walking for. All the people that think it's decentralized, you listen very carefully. It's not. Someone owns that ledger and you'll play by those rules and they can open and close that book on you at any time they want. And those are the regulated ones, and they will only be allowed to be regulated. I think we have proof of this coming. Uh, that that if you're caught, sent, well, if you're caught blinking and not looking quite in the right direction, you might, uh, well, the at minimum, you're going to lose what you have. But worse, you may be tied up in something you didn't understand is coming. So uh, uh, here's the, there was the caution. Uh, also, and I, and I it kind of passed by I me. Mean, I've talked about this before. The MLK thing came through right out. I didn't realize that last week it was going to be MLK Day. Uh, you know my position on that. Not such a good thing. He promoted civil rights. He pretend, promoted the content of your character. I told you the word character means your obligation. Uh, and that's found in Bouvier's 1856, uh, for those of you looking. Uh, that uh, This big promotion came from all the libertines out there about how Martin Luther King was all for equal rights and this and that and the other. And he was someone to exalt. And I don't I can only I didn't know the man. I can only look at a distance of what he you know, you know him when you see him, folks, and what he did and what he supported with civil rights. Uh, equal rights, correct? We got that. F Title forty two, ninety six and nine uh, nineteen eighty one. Uh, the right to pay exactions of every kind. So something popped up and I wanted to comment to this uh this idea because they're trying to say that this is this blockchain kind of democratizes stuff. Well it does, but not in a way people understand it. 
uh, that this uh, also MLK thing, they were trying to tie in this, how this democratizes this blockchain stuff does all this. And I post, uh, pose the question uh, to someone who uh, is libertine in their, um, uh, in their awareness, uh, prom- uh, supporting a bit of the politics of, of which I thought was so interesting, uh, trying to counter some other someone else who was, I think it was CNN, who was saying that he was a, the first uh, socialist or this or that, that Martin Luther King was a socialist, envir- environmentalist. And this response came back uh, with this. Um, anyone want to tell them he was Republican and hated taxes? And so I wanted to clarify the record, at least for my, my feed, and I said, could MLK, it's a question, you can answer it yourself here, folks, could MLK be against taxes but for equal rights, i.e. civil rights? And then I posted the quote from Title 42 in the link to Title 42, Section 1981, that statements of equal rights, quote, shall be subject, those of all y'all, with this status that is, shall be subject to like punishments, pains, penalties, taxes, licenses, and exactions of every kind, and no other. Hashtag human traffic awareness awareness moment. Human trafficking awareness moment. Could MLK actually support equal rights and be a great exalted one, despite his political uh, uh, republicanism, or his uh, his, uh, uh, perceived hate of taxes, and support an Equal Light Rights Act that was already there for uh, 100-something years uh, that said that you're actually subject to taxes, is, a, for me, more of an announcement of our big disconnect in even the libertine uh, set on, uh, in the social social arena that doesn't understand what's really going on. We'll talk about it. Understands there's a problem. And, and in some parts, you know, on the surface, is a, it has a, you know, to correct, make a correction, but not, I said, you can be correct. He can be correct. He was a Republican and not against, and he could have stated he was against taxes, but to support equal rights, he was actually supporting the content of your character, was your obligations to be subject to exactions of every kind. So how can that statement be actually applicable and correct for everyone that wants to support MLK? You'll have to explain that one to me. And I've done the MLK study, I mean, how many years now? And I don't even touch it anymore. It's, it's, it's out there. Or it should be, or maybe it, maybe it's gone. Maybe it's gone into the virtual internet. So we have this problem. And the first uh, report here says they do this because you use the currency that they've created or they've taken control over, and they use the currency that's theirs that you pay tax for using. You need to keep track of, because that's the extortion that's going on and how they set these things up for you to plug in in order for you to do that. You apply this whole thing to yourself. You plug in. Silent Weapons Quiet Wars. When I see this document and the Lysander Spooner document and what the other one, the uh, Protocol of the Elder Zion, now it's really starting to come up, and I'm, I'm not sure it's exactly the way I, I'm, I'm, I've said it, but the, the, the presentation now is a whole lot more knowledgeable than I was seeing it before I started to talk about it, that I hope uh, that people are extended, uh, people I don't even know, uh, reflections back are actually reflecting what the better look at this stuff is that tells us. Uh, they set it up for us. This is just like what happened in 53. They kicked everybody out. So if you want protection, they said it. They, this is in the court cases. You want protection, you have to apply. If you don't, uh, de facto rule, uh, the de jure people, you don't have protection. And those people didn't step up and throw those attorneys back out like the miners used to do. Uh, we lost it right there. But we adopt it, we pick it up, we pick, we, we plug in, and then they, now they have the control, they get to have their fees, their fines, their taxes, their extortions of every kind, because you asked for it. They sit there as the power to control. So, I've told you they're going to come in to shut down. Last week I told you that uh, there was a report that says the North, um, South Korea was going to ban cryptocurrency. It came out two days later that the report now that the Ministry of whatever determined they weren't, were not going to ban uh, uh, that no cryptocurrency trading ban in South Korea, government confirms. But then you have to kind of read the fine print, as I've told you to go read in the article. Sure enough, they're not going to do it, but here's two caveats that they state right inside. And I made the observations with the quote out of the story. You'll get the link. And what they say in the story is, I'll just do the quote first, South Korea government will pursue... Even though they say there's no ban, they say the South Korean government will pursue the crackdown on anonymous cryptocurrency trading accounts. 
And so my comment, observation of that is, no, there's no ban in the near future, as they say in the article, as long as they know you. Now let's get back to something I think that uh, Grimner says a lot about uh, your uh, your right to bear arms and registration is confiscation. You register. They're going to make you register. Everything else is going to be considered an anonymous cryptocurrency. I notice this word anonymous exchanges or cryptocurrency is now popping up to be the distinction. So be aware of this. And they're trading accounts. They're calling trade accounts. These are in commerce. All of them. And I said you, get, you pick, take note. You might be able to pri uh, privatize yours when you don't allow them to uh, create this straw man in order to gain control, to impermissibly control your private livelihood in exchange and private contract, which you have absolute right. Well, in the United States, we're supposed to have the right to do that. The other comment in the in the, uh, the article was it says that they were were not going to ban. Well, now they said that they will if you're an anonymous account not registered with the government. So that, this is what I told you they're going to do. They're going to go after these. They're going to create exchanges and require that they be registered and then controlled, and they will know you. Okay, so this is not decentralized. Only decentralized that they don't care where it comes from. Plug in, but someone has that ledger and controls that ledger. Someone, and in the financial sector, it's going to be those banks or somebody behind that. Uh, they also say in this uh, article, ban. They say they're not going to ban, but then they said there's going to be a ban on foreigners and underage investors from trading. Very particular thing here, expected to be implemented on January twentieth. Oh, it happened yesterday, apparently. So I add to that uh, observation, uh, and not only do they, are they going to go after the anonymous accounts, uh, you're also going to have to be from these parts. You're going to have to not be foreign to them. And this is going to be the standard that you fi find out going on. Uh, today's uh, right breaking news as we launch, it's not news, it's what's going on. Indian banks suspending Bitcoin exchange accounts. Now again, Bitcoin is just the face. It's a wrapper on a technology, a blockchain technology. Let's not get wild wild about it. They can just they can shut down any any wrapper they want. Bitcoin exchanges are under the fire in India as many of the nation's top banks have suspended or greatly curtailed functionality on exchange accounts. So they're not going to let this thing they're they're not letting it tie into the real system either. Uh, I won't go more. You have to re if you're into this, I want you to be careful. Be, uh, my concern is that you're looking at the future, the dystopian, you're going to be connected to this electronic device, and uh, your life is controlled by this. As I've been talking, it's coming. It's not even a guess anymore. It's not a, to me, it, was a, it couldn't have happened. There was just no way for us to do it. I was working in technology way back when. There's just no way it could happen. Boy, have things changed in 30, 40 years. Wow, pretty cool. Really cool at one level, just terrifying on the other. So, uh, as I've suggested, things will roll out. Uh, this is notice to you what's happening in other places. If it's not here yet, what they're doing to control, as I said, they will take something that is an outlaw and they will embrace it. Uh, they will embrace it and reg to regulate it. They will give you benefit. The outlaw would be given benefits to gain to and to um, to be accepting of the regulation, and they'll have all the reasons why they do it. Right now, coming out the gates, money laundering and other. Uh, and tax avoid evasion, if you no one got the clue up front, which I told you about. And again, getting into this technology is uh, speculative, not on the value, but on whether or not you're going to have your exchange existing the next day. We find it again. The first report, I mean, that, that major uh, that, that uh, article, he says they can shut these things at will. Exactly what I've told you. Here's another one. Now, regulators shut down leading crypto exchange after Ponzi scheme accusations. Presumed guilty here, folks. Get that an anonymously run cryptocurrency. What did the what did uh, what did uh, South Korea say? Anonymously run systems are going to be outlawed. They're after them. Anonymously run cryptocurrency exchange has shut down all lead, lending and trading operations following a cease and desist orders from authorities in Texas and North Carolina and alleged attacks on the platform. This is another vulnerability we bring up about the attacks on the platform. Uh, the popular site BitConnect, long accused of being a Ponzi scheme, said in a press release Tuesday that, quote, continuous bad press has made community members uneasy and created a lack of confidence. Do I have to read that again? I think I will. It created a lack of confidence in the platform. 
trading platforms. Trading platforms are the financial system. And they talk about the platform. They're talking about trading as the band. They're in commerce. These things are in the jurisdiction that all you all that think that you're being libertine have plugged into right there. Uh, the lack of confidence. These are con men. All of this. And I'm not even taking me Bitcoin now. I'm saying the system that's running this through, that allowed this thing to come up, the one that allows the hype, the one that allows you to plug in and get used to this thing, then slowly turns up the heat on the pot of all you boiling frogs, is what's going on here. They're telling us exactly what's that. And then you, they explain the susceptibility, so they bring it into a larger context. This is all like an equity discussion as well. Well, with the, the larger, for those similarly situated who are blindsided, who can't be blindsided by this harm, well, they're, they're vulnerable to, to, uh, to a DDoS, a DDoS attacks, and they can't get their funds. Well, they don't, they're not, they're ignoring the fact that the, these governmental agencies will come in and they're gonna shut you down. If you're not with the program, they shut you down. If you're involved with that, they don't, tell you you're not going to get your stuff. In fact, you become an accessory. Word to the wise. Watch what's going on. Uh, there, there may be ways to go through to have a... Uh, one company had a subset. We, we heard about that. It was a cold storage. That may be the way to do that then can... Uh, it's not in trade. It's offloaded as a storage of bank and then it's offloaded in an emergency uh, to another place that everyone go gets their money and moves it from there again. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure how the how the uh, regulators will do this, but you understand when they can shut down. This is what I tell you about regulation. It's the license to monopolize and centralize. So if you think you're decentralized, that's not going to last long. It's just not. I don't know what people. Anybody who continues to argue with me on this, I don't know what's in your mind. Actually, you really have to take a step back. If you don't understand about the straw man and how to, the weaponry part I told you about and how to take the weapon of the one that's going to use it against you because you don't have one, and then use it against them, if you don't have all that thought in your head, please take a step back. Drop the chalupa and take a step back. Uh, please. This is, a, this is a serious movement going on in this, in this world right now. Very, very cool, but very, very, um, very, very serious for people. Whether they see the the, tra the, the, the harm, is, the, the uh, danger, I think, is really transparent to most everybody. And we get lost. We like to play the games. I, I mean, we like to play our games. So we like to think we're in it. We think we're smart. He's pretty smart. And, uh, and and we don't realize the kind of traps that are set up. But researchers find that uh, not only with the governmental stuff, I told you there's hacking and this and that, but there's also manipulation. Uh, people that, uh, and they're kind of beyond me to even think, someone who decides I'm going to hack the system, I'm going to jump in, I'm going to get the Bitcoin, I'm not going to steal them. I'm going to... I'm going to run the market with these things so I can make more inside on the theft uh, unseen than I can if I stole the stole the coins and ran. It was what researchers found. Excuse me, found that uh, one person likely drove Bitcoin from $150 to 1,000. Show you this is all a, a manipulated speculative condition. It's digital. It can be hacked. Uh, I'm not giving a judgment. Well, I'm just telling you here it is. That someone did a research and they went through that's a mountain gox uh, Bitcoin exchange. The currency, they called it a currency exchange then. It's, I think it's been shut down by now. I don't remember now. But they like stole, uh, they were able to gra grab about 600,000 bitcoins at the time worth 188 million. They were able to do inside uh, trades and they were, it's able to be found within how this was done. If you think this is all anonymous, they were able to study this and found out that these trades were being done to raise and lower the price, like day trading in a way that every day that, that every time they would come in and do this, the price would go. There'd be some exchange of money, some value. Uh, they were actually pumping the system in order to make the profit on a continuous theft of the bitcoins they originally stole, which is another type of vulnerability. I thought it was kind of brilliant to uh, do it that way. How bold, how how brash are you to go ahead and stand there in the bank and just uh, uh, give loans out to all your all the customers of the bank? <laughs> Let them invest in in the stolen currency while you stand right there. That's uh, pretty pretty cool. Uh, pretty bold, pretty brazen. Be, boy, way beyond whatever I'd, I'd be uh, interested in even thinking about. But uh, And don't. And that's part of the problem why it, it surprises me and kind of tickles me to hear it. Uh, so the, the team of people did the research on this. Another style of vulnerability. Put that in your list of uh, on your risk management side to see how you want to do this uh, with the Bitcoin, where it's going. I really, um, part of me really likes the technology, but there's a much bigger play going on that I don't think any of you really want to be involved in. And I think anybody with the libertine mindset will maybe too late see that's the case. 
And the problem with that is not not that you can't kind of just be divorce just divorce yourself of the whole thing is that you you have lost a whole lot and not had the the, the countering parallel system involved. And that delay or that failure may be the ultimate break and downfall for you, and you're going to be forced to engage. And this is the thing. You want to think it you're ahead of time. You think you're smart about it. It's intelligent. You think you you, you got it all handled. But, oh, I think I can do it all except certain this and that. Well, it becomes a point when the game gets played, and the king has to be knocked over, and that's your king. You lose the game. You lose the whole of the ability to make the play. And that the game is over. You're you're done where you are, and they've got it. And so be careful of all this this other things. Uh, so it, this leads me on to this next point: of the hype and the hoax that's going on about this. That's um, uh, notwithstanding the, the small good part, I think it's pretty cool in the privatized privatized part. Uh, not so much maybe in the in the in, in the trading side. Like I said, the tying together of the production to a digital blockchain sounds a lot more of a formidable privatization potential than to deal with it on the currency side where you're dealing with governmental money and they're looking for their tax man to come collect because you're using it. Uh, but another hoax uh, uh, system, another uh, another hype system, uh, we move on now to from our digital health, financial health into our, uh, our uh, actual physical health. A massive flu outbreak. Uh, here's the real story. The media won't touch the lies, the hoax, the scandal. Another clearly, concisely laid out report from uh, uh, John uh, Rappaport, uh, Rappaport uh, about this uh, scam that's going on in these vaccines. He touches on what I told you about. These flu vaccines are only 10% effective. He goes on to show you again, for those of you that are thinking about all this, he goes on to explain that the uh, actual fact is uh, the number may not even correlate to a reality on tests that they did long before they found out in people that had pneumonia there was in their tests the, there was a, well what should I read I guess I could read it uh, some astronomical number yeah here here it is uh, according to CDC to statistics in uh, December of 2005 in the British Medical Journal now <laughs> uh, Influenza, quote, influenza and pneumonia took 62,034 lives in 2001. Now, this is on top of what I told you last week about this and the ineffectual list of the California shot and then why they're having so much. He says, though, that the influenza and pneumonia, as the CDC statistics mentioned, say there was 62,000 lives lost in 2001. 61,777 of which were attributable to pneumonia, 257 of uh, which to flu. 257 people died in 2001 to flu. That's not very many. That's only 18 cases of a flu virus positively identified in that group. So, in his report, he explains that the People are getting sick. They think it's the flu. Flu-like symptoms are caused, I've told you this before, are caused by a number of things. Not necessarily because you're told uh, that it's the flu, that it is. That when they tested this, the cases testing positive for flu were only 18 of the 257 that died. Though death rates are actually for pneumonia. And so here you go in and get treated for what the doctor tells you is the flu, and he's wrong, how many times? I mean, like I didn't even do the number. It's some infinitesimal time you could have it for the flu, and some thousands and thousands and thousands of times more that it's pneumonia or something that causes pneumonia. And so I want you to be aware of this condition, uh, that uh, it doesn't, because they say what it is, it doesn't mean that it is. The CDC's got the evidence that it's not, and they still push this uh, this vaccine thing, uh, then, the, and they admit that that it's not. It's they admit that it's not functional. They admit that it's not working, and maybe maybe it's not working even if it did work because there's only a few people that ever have actually get the flu that is a killer. All the other cases are something else. And what I appreciated in this report had to make it really made me chuckle since I've been talking about this since 2009 or so. 
uh, coming out the gate, I was talking about this. Uh, he references the year 2009, and I come to this point where he stops and says here, uh, so the point here is that they don't have the flu, these people. Therefore, even if you assume the flu vaccine is useful and safe, it couldn't possibly prevent all those, quote, flu cases that aren't flu cases. The vaccine couldn't possibly work. And here's where I smiled, and uh, don't know what part this I played to this, but here it was. The vaccine isn't designed to prevent fake flu unless pigs can fly. Thank you very much. I think I got this from Gary L., and I don't want to touch it because I don't know if he's going to talk about it on his show in two hours, uh, Road Less Travel with Gigi's Boo. Uh, you might want to tune into that. It gives you all these different types of stories and things and different vantage points and views. Uh, but I think I got this. I just wanted to point out, without getting too deep, there's a survey going on. For uh, The survey is an ongoing project. So, it, uh, so if you have unvaccinated children uh, and are unvaccinated yourself, please fill the questionnaire. Well, they go through and discuss what they have so far. Currently, there's 16,493 participants in this thing. And what I found, and I'll just do this in a paraphrase. You read through this, and it's quite a long read, and it takes a while to do it, and I haven't done it in any depth. I just haven't had a time this week. Uh, what you'll find out is they show by the uh, statistics that they're getting a marked increase in things like hay fever, asthma, uh, uh, neurodermatitis, herpes, marked increase of of uh, children so called uh, that get the vaccines over the minimum rare cases of these very same things in those that don't get vaccinated so word uh, here's a reference a uh, study you want to do a study of a study here do this one folks go read through it i thank Gary o for bringing it up i don't want to get too deep in case he covers it if he doesn't you you need to read the black and white for yourself you need to prove this out uh, validate it yourself. I think it was value, absolutely valuable to have to see it. The black and white tells us a lot if we can uh, work through uh, the uh, what it's meaning for us. Uh, again, when you combine what John Rappaport was explaining, that the CDC's own studies said that what's out there, what you call the flu, is not the flu can't work. <laughs> if it's not the flu and only 257 cases are out there, it, it, even if it worked 100%, it's only going to stop those two, seven, 257 cases. It's not working on those people that don't have it, which the majority don't. And then you put together with this comp this uh, report of studies, and you see that you, by getting the vaccination, you're bringing on other things, uh, lifelong problems beyond a flu, which only a, you know a small percentage would get, an infinitesimal amount. So this is very important to connect these little these two reports together. And I want you to do that, or I hope maybe if he touches on it, maybe he will. Maybe he won't. We don't know. I don't talk with uh, Gary until I'm, I'm as uh, listening as I can while I do post-production. So he, he'll he bring this stuff up and try to, uh, and he dumps all the links into the RLM chat, so be there to get the links that he may have. I'll have these two on the blogcaster, uh, but I think it's very important for all you all that think this is an important subject, and it certainly seems that your little ones being unvaccinated uh, have less uh, of the uh, rare occurrence, only very small percentages of increase of very uh, serious thing, herpes throughout your life and all kinds, of, I don't want to go through the list, all kinds of stuff that they have a stati absolute big statistical increase, uh, maybe hundreds of times more um, pre prevalent when you vaccinate. Now, we also, under and I'm just going to attach this without any proof, I remember something in the vaccine starting with the ch monkey pox, pox is I think a form of chicken pox type, poxes are a type of a herpes type thing, so if that's the case, it makes no. It makes some perfect sense that if they still are using these kinds of ancient, these strains that they think were working, or the same procedures using those eggs, because that's how they do it. So that's not even really a, an issue. Uh, but that they that they use this maybe the this this base form of the vaccine is causing all this as well. The cancers that we hear, the the herpes that we hear. Why would a, why would people, why would why would little ones have all these 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 problems? And and since we've been growing up, I mean I. That that's the other thing that, that gets me. It's, I don't remember it happening so much before. It's certainly happened in uh, autism, all this stuff. And although there's no connect, direct connection to autism, I don't think uh, no, neither to the mercury. And I think I would have to agree with that. There's other things in there that can be the cause of a dysfunction in the body or a toxification in the body that does cause these things, these responses. So they talk a little bit about that uh, 
the uh, increased in heavy metals, I didn't find that as persuasive, but it is there. So again, up to you. I don't I don't have a uh, thought really more to do that. It's not something I focus on. I just don't do it. I advocate against it. I say hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. Uh, I'm still hygieneing, folks. I'm still spraying the. Uh, in face of all this so-called flu that's out there, that's all maybe more pneumonia, uh, uh, causative pneumonia-like, uh, then I do my spraying and my thing, and I keep my distance, and I wash my hands, and not that I'm unsociable, I just uh, watch. Like I told you about poison oak, and I finally figured out when I was a little one, I, I can not spread poison oak, because I was really, really allergic to that, I don't know where that came from, but I was. Uh, I just found out I could control it a lot, well, even though I would respond, I could keep it from spreading by not touching myself, not scratching. You know, I scratch all of it. It's pretty soon. It's all over you. You puff up like a big balloon. Not a cool deal. Finally, it took me a real little bit to realize, stop using your hands. Your hands are the vectors, essentially. And it's the same thing with the flu and the cold and this and that and the other. So, talked about that last week if you're interested. And while I talk about the last week interested, I thank you very much again on Minds.com. The support there has been much better than even YouTube. I don't know what's going on with the YouTube. Uh, don't know about all that, but appreciate the com- uh, the uh, the support. Uh, I've been here in 2017. Really appreciate the bonuses. I'm still wor- again. I've got you know, work. I'm still working on part of my minds working on how the promotion will be. But I appreciate your support all there on minds.com, and uh, hope it's working for you there. And, and again, it's not just about listening to what I'm saying. It's taking that and applying it. It's it's here to apply. Uh, moving on to now, I get to where I went to the uh, from from this. Uh, uh, The uh, report on the the things that are in the vaccines to the fact that those things can change and cause the uh, organisms to be more more resistant and not work and the adjustments we move into a new a recent story that popped up here a day or two ago uh, I needed to tell you about this uh, again it seems more like a public uh, awareness campaign here today uh, just get the information for you be aware here folks because. There are telltale signs that the science in, of, of, of antibiotics certainly is what they said it was. The organisms in nature are tougher than man can conceive. And here's the evidence, if not, if you didn't think so. Uh, chickens from British supermarket show record levels of antibiotic-resistant superbugs. Chickens on sale for human consumption, you beastie animals, you. In Britain, supermarkets are now testing for record levels of superbugs that are resistant to some of the strongest antibiotics in use today, according to new research that give you a link from the UK government. Okay, so is it a big scare story? I don't know, but folks, if this is true, oh, this is this is in a country that professes to have the highest and most stringent standards against all this nonsense. Is the other point that caught me. Uh, these results are alarming because resistance to antibiotics among livestock can easily, very easily affect the resistance among humans and could essentially render vital medicines ineffective against potentially serious diseases. I want to read more. Those of you that know about the subject know. If you don't, you need to read this. And so you need to see about this problem. It's now testing the superbugs are in the food. Okay, so this is the first warning to you all. And the only thing I can know to do here, not knowing what the bugs are, you got to cook your food. you got to heat it up. Go find the standards that have been found to do the, uh, to cook the food, to get rid of the doc, the uh, the organisms. If I remember right, it's minimum, I think it's 165 degrees when you're, when you're maintaining temperature. I think it has to go to 185 degrees for, I think, about 10 minutes at least. If my numbers are wrong, fix that. You got to, <coughs> excuse me, you got to know what that is. You need to cook your food, given this is the case, in order to get rid of these things that can't be killed. Because if, I don't know what's on this, but if you have a scratch on your skin, I can't see how that wouldn't aid you getting something that there's no cure for. Because the medicine, because it's over-prescribed or overused, or just the fact that they're being used and they don't go back to things that uh, that that may be better and less. Uh, Less uh, uh, chemical, le- less pharmaceutical. There's so many things that are natural that you might try. And when people stop, step back and look at that, they do find that there's more natural things so that you don't get this kind of an alarming increase in the virility of these organisms. What was it? A Norwegian hospital found 
hygiene was better than antibiotics. And you remember that story I reported on? It just come to my mind. I don't remember where all this is. But go back and research it. I think it was a Norwegian hospital doctor. He got vilified for that. And then it turned out that he was correct. Cleanliness is next to godliness that came to my mind. Hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. If they stop using the stuff that pharma sells you, the government says it's okay to sell you to supposedly make your life more wonderful, you may go back in time. Uh, you may be the uh, Luddite that actually finds that the simple way of life uh, the the was better. Let's put it that way. So, word to the why. This kind of startled me a little bit to actually see this in the food and being sold. They didn't even shut this down. They just said that they were there. So, uh, word to the wise. Here it's coming, folks. It's already uh, already on us. Uh, now, moving over to ch chicken to beef. I want to touch base now on some stuff that's kind of old news because I didn't get to it, but still is important. I think important points are, are here to point out there uh, along the lines of what I was talking before, uh, how you're treated by the court system. It's a systemic corruption. You, you don't walk into that thing and ask those people for a, permi a permission at one. They'll tell you they, they'll deny it, the permission or they will deny the remedy against their uh, oppression. The abuser will not stop abusing. I don't know why people don't get this. You don't walk in there and you don't ask them to do a thing. You go in there and you use the uh, obligation and duty that's bestowed upon them in the law that they've accepted that requires that they do something, not ask that as a question. Is my problem with this Bundy trial as we move from chickens to beef? And boy, he told us right off the bat that day he went home, he had a, got him cut up an inch and a half or so of sirloin or whatever the heck it was. He had to gum it down, but he in fact had his steak and everyone should have a steak. Uh, uh, forever the promoter of beef uh, is a cool thing. Uh, so certainly uh, no no uh, antibiotics there that I can tell uh, that he's been talking about. Certainly uh, haven't been a problem. And so beef is where it's at. A uh, little story came through about Coca-Cola having some worms in it uh, from a girl in Italy. Uh, I responded to uh, Sholly that, uh, that uh, you know, I've heard in the future uh, people will kill for that amount of, of animal protein as the agenda uh, is to get rid of our uh, dependence on protein, beef protein, uh, chicken, animal proteins, uh, on this new world uh, sustainable sustainability thing, underwriting the politics that's going on with the BLM, why you're seeing some of this as well. Uh, but getting to the point of the corruption, uh, come up with some stories. I want to just touch on some things. E Epic, uh, this is now from Zero Hedge. It finally made the mainstream alternative, I guess I can say. Epic, finally, it finally hit a couple of weeks ago. Epic corruption, after it was obvious to all. Unsealed court documents show how prosecutors tried to rig the Bundy trial. Now, you know I've been on kind of record. I'm not really happy with what I saw about that. They weren't making the right combination of, of, of collateral attacks. They were doing it within the jurisdiction, not doing it outside the jurisdiction. Uh, the attorneys were involved. They were. I showed you how they were doing it incorrectly. You saw Ryan Bundy being the noticed by the attorneys themselves that he was the one that cracked it open by attacking what he thought had to be done consistent, not that I've talked to him, but consistent with what he knew he needed that I would have been looking at when I told you that it was found out that those assessment report, those, uh, those threat assessments were being hidden. I said, why didn't the attorneys use those? Use the fact of that and then use that to defend their attorneys. That was Ryan Bundy making the issue of it. The fact later was a week later, then we started seeing the fallout of this. Once you started to crack the record that was supposed to be given to a defendant by the Brady, uh, Brady Act, the Brady decision, which means you divulge all the information that could be exculpatory to uh, a defense, and they, the, petition, the, the prosecutor can't make that decision, and that was denied, they're now showing this is like epic corruption. My problem with this is this is the cat box cover-up. Somebody... Because the attorneys finally did start to ask for more important things and insist this thing came up and came out to show that it was a persecution going on, not a prosecution. And this is what you're trying to see the Catbot cover up. They're going to focus in on the prosecutor because he was on charge of this. I remember I told you about this. He's just going to be an assistant attorney that's going to be moved back into the thing. You're probably not going to hear more about this. But it took all this to start showing that there is in this country, and they're trying to show that it's just limited to this prosecution, this prosecutor, 
in this prosecution, and I want you to know it's systemic. If you, not, I don't want to hear that, oh, we know that. No, you've got to look at how they did this. Because this is how they do it in all places. And they do worse than even this. This is kind of interesting, too. And they will take your stuff even if you're not involved with a, with a, a trial. Because I've got a minor who had that happen to him. And there's no remedy for that. And this was many years ago, early on. So I want to point out, let's not lose sight of, we may say, oh, this is a rigged Bundy trial, and they focus on the prosecutors. I'm telling you, the judge was part and parcel to allow those t people, those men and women, to be held without actual evidence of what this was about to keep them in confinement for over the, over the two years. The judge allowed that. And the attorneys allowed it by not challenging that and challenging that jurisdiction. As I've told you, you go right to Title 28, USC, uh, I think it's 88 to 134 or 33, and you'll see that there's no court in Oregon that has competency over that area. None. And so you go, you go with your attorney and you ask the court there, well, are you a criminal? Well, they, they got no competency anyway. They're gonna, they can tell you anything they want. And you've asked them. That we got, I don't want people to lose sight. This is not over. Uh, this is now the. I've told you the war is starting. I didn't get to these stories to to, to flesh that out. We're look. You know, this is the muck and the mire. The the prosecutor, the muck and the mire. They still got the muck. That mire got caught in. This is the persecutor. The court system enabled this whole thing. This thing starts from an environmental. Fraud, uh, the, the Bundys and the government stalking tortoise, I think, is uh, uh, something that Vin, uh, Vince easily uh, you know, has, has promoted, I think, uh, the, uh, the stalking tortoise. This is a cover. This is a false front. That's the straw turtle. You understand? This is all the same stuff. They, 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 made, it a, they made a party out of, the, uh, out of the turtle, the straw party. And they went after these people, and they disregarded the law. They did, used it as an impermissible way. What else would you find that this thing, whole thing was rigged? And it's rigged from the top, folks, as I told you. Sessions is not out of this. I, I consider this the crimes of this century was the Bundy, the Bundy persecution. It's not over, folks. I don't want you to, uh, I guess that's my whole point here. Don't think this is over regarding the, the corruption. We now have to attack that. All of you, all the, the peanut gallery has to go after that. Uh, I'm hoping that somebody does. Uh, another report that came out at that time, Meyer gets demoted in U.S. Attorney's Office. That actually wasn't what happened. There was a shuffling around of the offices. These attorneys, these uh, U.S. attorneys were in, in, in uh, um, temporary positions. He just got put back, I understand, back into one of those temporary positions. He's not in the face and the lead of it. And then they mistrialed it. And this is the same report that Sessions said that he supported his U.S. acting U.S. attorneys. He didn't hold out uh, Meyer. He agreed with what they did. This is a systemic corruption, folks, to the top. And how would Session know to continue it? It's even deeper than you think. Or we've just identified an officer who's incompetent, absolutely incompetent. And that could be actionable, too, if you have a place to go with it. So, again, all this was done. I've heard very little about this since they got out. But there should have been a real push. I hope there is. Maybe I'm just, you know, not no one's talking to me about it. Not that they have been, but I don't see much noise, the news or anything, stories, uh, nothing uh, coming out. But uh, the the point is that this is exactly an evidence of how it gets done to everybody. And it's not limited to the federal court. It's in your states. They do all the same stuff. And so now that you know that, those of you that are all into this, what are you going to do with that knowledge? How do you set that up? You know they're going to do it now. How? What are your tools to make sure you get that on the record so that you move this thing forward faster than one Ryan Bundy being mocked and vilified and defamed 
until the other attorneys decided, oh, yeah, we got a problem here. We better ask about it. We better insist. We'll have to go the long way and get some defendant to do something. Folks, the, the, the whole point about this in my mind is the presumption of innocence needs a stronger advocate. Because if the presumption of innocence was actually functioning, the judge couldn't take it on the word of the prosecutor who cannot produce evidence on his own or by his statement, could not take on his statement that the Bundys were more less than innocent in determining their release, even if they agreed to go to trial in that court. Is Was the notice to me this was going down in flames unless somebody did something to pull out what was being hidden. They're doing it right in front of everybody's face. The presumption of innocence that that they can even attach this to us needs a stronger advocate. That stronger advocate is you, each one of you, in understanding this and tying it over to what I said in the first hour. I guess it's part of the deal, how this all works. To me, it's just one big, uh, big scam, and it's all got the same mechanism. And so the mechanism can be broke in the same ways, by the same tools. You just focus it in on whatever though that subject matter is. A, a, a report that came out from Maxine Bernstein from a Twitter, judge denies a, a, a attorney Marcus Mumford's request to delay Mon's hearing on why court should not ban Mumford from practicing law in Oregon federal courts. Hearing set for the 10th uh, uh, Monday, well that was before, I want to point out this is this is the guy that stood up and railed a, a for uh, some a release in Cal in in Oregon. He got tackled, got tased. He went to uh, apparently had a hearing, and he writes a delay motion. He says, "I need to have more time." The response from the court is, "But you didn't give me any reason to delay. You're going to have to show up." Now I want to point out the simple point here: the attorney who knew better. He, when you make an, a, a request to the court, you have to have a reason for it. To not put the viable reason or any at all shows he's a bit a bit incompetent. He was supposed to be he was supposed to be defending the the Bundy uh, one of the one of the people. I, mean, I think it was Bund, uh, it was Ammon, the Bundys. How is this fun, how is he supposed to be functionally uh, representative even if he doesn't understand the basic principle? You with a with an objection you have to have a reason and it's got to be a valid one that. I show. I think this was indicative of the problem of the attorneys, and why you can't really rely on it either. But more importantly, this results in him doing a tactical thing. He just takes the fact of what he did, pleads guilty to the fact, and he agrees not to practice in the Oregon federal system. He's going to go back and so that allows him to practice back. I think in Utah is where he came from. He just agrees not to come out and practice in Oregon which is still kind of a slap in his face, but listen to the tactics. Because they didn't go through a trial, there was no evidence built in his, in his concession by guilt. They can't develop the evidence to take back the federal government, take it back to Utah and go after his practice in Utah. And I want you to understand this, this, this game, this chess game that goes on, because when you see all these ramifications that go on, you see what kind of a nasty thing goes on. I want to point out there's an incompetence that we see. Whether that's tactical, he hasn't said. Uh, why, why he uh, agreed or delayed, uh, why he did a paper without with substance, I don't know. But this is the quality of, of, of the system, this bar association system, that is the prosecutor, is the attorneys, is the judges, is those that make the rules, is those that are in the committees that make the rules, that c keeps the system, that asks for the money, that continues the harm, and, de and destroys your lives. They're, they're, they're dysfunctional, and here's the evidence to me. He, did, he put out a motion to delay and didn't get a good reason for the delay. And the court says, well, if you don't give me a reason, I can't just delay. That, that hurts the other side, too, if, if, even if we were looking at neutrality. So my observation on this whole thing where, where this uh, Sessions comes in and, uh, and, and pats every, all the first uh, the attorneys on the back. Uh, so Sessions agrees with the producer persecution. Quote, I also want to thank those first assistant United States attorneys who temporarily stepped up, close quote, is what he said. The, uh, my observation here is he couldn't condemn what he's agreed with all along and into the future, could he? And the judge, 
protects this injustice, hashtag denial of justice. And this was on a, a tweet from Vince about this Meyer gets demoted. This is not anything like that, actually. You're watching how the system tortoises up, <laughs> turtles up, protects itself, so that you don't perceive how bad it really is. The prosecutorial misconduct, just tip of the iceberg, as another follow-up thought, the judge, in quotes, because I don't think she's proven judgeship or competence or establishment of the court at all, and she was never challenged collaterally, not through requesting to the, of the bank robber, are you going to stop robbing the bank? No, uh, yeah, I will stop. Or no, uh, are you robbing the bank? No, I'm not going to. Ro- I'm not going to ask the bank robber. I'm not going to ask the criminal. I'm going to insist on in a, in, in a collateral enforcement mechanism. The judge, so called, allowed the bias not requiring the government prove the dangers of the people supposedly proved innocent here. As I said before, the mere the hashtag mere observance of impropriety is sufficient here for you, the peanut gallery, to understand how bad these ethical violations are. And then I move into the trust. Remember the con job here? The con, all this is on a con. The hashtag trust irretrievably lost. If you don't look at this whole thing and see there's no way to regain the trust and you think that what's gone on has been justice, you've missed it. If you shut up from here, you're missing it, folks. You've missed it, and you've missed a great opportunity to stop, uh, step up and stop some of this or help to stop it. All that I see and all that we're attempting to do in our way, uh, with only a few of the people that I work on, I have another observation on all this, uh, hashtag, I mean, a Twitter. Do you understand under the now presumptive fraud, government does no wrong, as long as everyone in Gov lies, they can cover up and profit from continuous crimes with no way to overcome that? Folks, do you understand that's how this works? They, they lie and they cover themselves up and you have no evidence to go after them. You have to find the tools to do that. I additionally add, add th- that isn't a system of justice. Irretrie- irretrievable trust breach. And I think one last observation on this was Sessions barking up the wrong bush. Check. Considering a quote, considering the seriousness of the crime and its impact on the community. Check. Marijuana business has since become a sophisticated multi-million dollar industry that helps fund some government programs. Is what was stated in this in an article about Sessions on the marijuana in contradistinction of what he supports as the present prosecution. He's, they make the admission that it's a consider he has to consider the seriousness of the crime. Yet marijuana businesses are aiding the government. My point on this is, shouldn't he then prosecute the government crimes? if they're now harming the people, is the hypocrisy of this system that you're watching. that has no remedy, folks, unless you step up. Absolutely, you have to do this. There's no one else to do this. Use the parts that I'm suggesting. You need to go get a bigger uh, bigger hammer. You need more uh, more things to bring, but I'll give you the substances I give the first hour about how, they, how you take your knowledge of these fictions they build against you and use them as a weapon against them. And the same method I do that is the same method you apply to all the other things that that you know they're doing wrong and they get away with it. And until you do, we're not, until you do that, you're just going to be yakking, whining, gnashing it, do whatever you want to call it. You're not going to be functional. You're not going to be efficacious in your action. And you're never going to get anything done and you become the accessory to the crime against you. Why? Because silence is acquiescence, silence is consent, and silence on your part becomes also that false representation I talked to you about last hour. Thank you for tuning in today. Hope uh, something I said will help you out. Get working on uh, helping everyone out yourself as well, because that's what the equitable j- uh, remedies are. You know, Grimmer, thank you very much for what you do at reallibertymedia.com, and the broadcaster and the archives and all that stuff, and uh, ucy.tv. Jules, thank you very much for all the casts that you do. And uh, any terrestrial broadcasters at FN Network, Minds.com. Thank you again over there uh, for the support. I do appreciate that. Hope you're getting something out of it there. Don't have much time to do things. And uh, see, uh, I guess next week, I'll be here next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information, you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast. This is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Good
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>